1073 and 1530. It's Mountain Country. Low Harris here in studio with Mitchell Dillman. Mitchell, you're a woodworker, a builder, an artist. I, I feel like there could be so many titles for what you do. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff. I do. <laughs> you do, and you're from right here in the Colorado Springs community. Um, but you're not really you're not headed out to Home Depot, Depot to pick up all of your wood supplies and, and get to work. You do something a little more special. In no, we we actually harvest our materials right here in town. Um, we pick up everything we need around town. But that doesn't mean you're going to parks and cutting down trees, right? <laughs> no, no. We've been fortunate. We've we work to harvest trees from the local wildfires. Um, and we started this way back, way back in 2008, 2009, I was getting trees from the Hayman fire because I had some ideas, to, you know, I had come up with some ideas to do this. And, and, and at the time would, it was really like a hobby. And these trees would otherwise just sit there and rot, rot. away in, in the burnt forest. Yeah, areas. they just waste away out there. And so that idea then evolved into something greater. Was it with the Waldo Canyon fires? So that's pretty much what happened. I, I, I was, you know, back in 2008 and 2009, the economy was kind of slow and I'd been in construction and uh, things were slow. So I, w I took that opportunity to develop some ideas that I had and, and we jumped into uh, making furniture from those trees. I had actually been in the log home building business and the ideas stemmed from that because we always had leftover logs and I hated to see those logs go to waste. Mm -hmm. And so you skip forward a few years and, and I look out my window one day and the whole right in the neighborhood's going on, you know, right here in town's on fire. and so. That was what, I think when this thing really, when I made a decision that, hey, this is something that we've had happen right here in Colorado Springs. And folks don't realize it, but it's not gonna go away. It's not gonna go away anytime soon. And so that was 2012, right there in the Mountain Shadows neighborhood, the, the Waldo Canyon fire. Um, and and I, I decided, you know, I gotta let the folks know, let our neighbors know they can do, that we can do something with those trees. And that's not an afterthought that most of us have, I don't think. I mean, I never think, well, whatever happens to all of the trees that get burnt down or are half burnt or, you know, could still be used. But you did, and uh, you not only decided to build furniture, but you, build, you built other things that benefited people who lost their homes in the fire. Can you tell us about that? Well, I, I, you know, I grew, I grew up here, and, and when I saw our city on fire, it was obviously quite disturbing and and I remember hearing people in the media talk about how it was hor you know such a horrible event for the people in the neighborhood but I think everybody in town was affected you know and 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 so we set out to let some the neighbors in Mountain Shadows know we could use their trees to, to make them stuff and then real quickly <clears throat> when you start making stuff you have what a lot of people consider scrap but Right. I don't see anything as scrap. There is no such thing as scrap when you weld and you make things from scratch. So so, so I have in my hands right now this uh, <clears throat> pyramid. Am I using the right shape term here? It's a, pyra a wooden pyramid handmade from wood harvested from the Waldo Canyon fires. And you said everybody who lost their home in that fire has one of these in their homes. Yeah, I think for the most part, everyone that there, there might have been one or two families that didn't receive one or didn't get one. But um, we worked with Colorado Springs together to, to, to make sure that everybody got got one of those. And then uh, then we actually worked with them later that year to, to produce a bunch more and go out and raise money to, to get back to that to that cause. So you sold these wood pyramids that you made from harvested wood from the fires, and then you went and sold them to raise money for the families who lost their homes. Well, yeah, it, that's, it was. That's so that's so full circle and amazing and incredible. And I, I, yeah, I get it. I mean, it's so tough to see, even if you're not directly affected by those fires, a part of your community is displaced. And I think everybody feels the hurt and the pain and the confusion. So, I mean, wow, what yeah. an incredible task. Um, well, we're going to take a break real quick. We're going to play a song and we're going to come right back. We're talking to Mitchell Dillman, a local woodworker, builder, and artist. It's 107.3 and 1530 Mountain Country. 107.3 and 1530, it's Mountain Country, and we're back with Mitchell Dillman. He's a local craftsman and artist, and well, I well, I think you could also say YouTube star now, right? Yeah, we do a lot of YouTube stuff. We, you, we've been doing YouTube videos for a lot of years now. Uh, which is incredible and really cool, and I got to see some, and we're going to touch on that. But what, I want to get back to... Um, Part of the big reason you're here, which is we were so awestruck and inspired by what you did with the wood from the local fires we had. You harvested the wood and you started building things from that wood and you continue to. I do, I do. You know, we talked about Waldo Canyon fire and of course everybody knows that it was almost a year to the day later that 
or within the week or so uh, um, that we had the Black Forest fire. And so that one's a whole lot different and, and it's really affected the community uh, as, as much if not more. Um, that particular fire, you know, in Black Forest is predominantly on private land and so there's a whole lot more to be done out there. There's a lot more work to do and there's a lot of other groups getting involved that have been involved and Black Forest Together is, is, is heading, you know, spearheading, but we're working with a lot of those families as well now. And so we, we have a lot of trees right here at our doorstep to make all sorts of cool stuff with. Yeah, to clean up, to recycle, to use, to turn into something beautiful. I love that concept. You're taking something that's dead and left over and you're making something alive and beautiful and useful out of it. So to my left here, you actually brought in a, a, a very tall stool that you built. It's like a bar stool. Um, Where did the wood come from? So that chair there, that's one of our our uh, bar chairs. It's a swiveling bar chair. It's, it's got swivels. Yep, oh, it's on swivels. All our bar chairs and bar stools swivel, and they're all on um, adjustable glide feet, so they'll protect your floor. And um, we're, we've really stepped up, and we're making some really nice furniture. This see, is I'm a wood nut, so to see just what a beautiful product that is. I mean, if you love wood furniture, log homes, anything like that, you've got to check out some of Mitchell's products. And where can they find those? So way? we've got a couple of different websites, but uh, ColoradoSpringSawmill.com is probably the best place to start. Um, if you get there, there's there's a link right there on that website that'll lead you into logfurniturehowto.com where we actually sell the blueprints and the kits and the uh, the finished furniture. That's right, so the kits, you actually sell DIY welding kits so that people can make the furniture that they see and it's really affordable. I saw one that was like, you know, 75 bucks for the kit and then you go out and you do it yourself, it's the time, but how gratifying to yep. build it yourself. We wanted to teach people how they could do it, how they could take the same trees. You know, we've had wildfires all over the, the country. The Western United States has gone through, experienced huge drought and, and so we've been able to to use YouTube and the internet and tap into a market where we're helping people, teaching people right off the internet how to make this stuff for themselves. So we sell the kits finished, uh, welded or unwelded, and, uh, and, and then we have obviously the finished furniture there as well. What a cool thing you could do with like your, your 12 year old on a weekend, you know, is to build bar stools together. I want to build the adult rocking horse that I saw on your website. All right, we'll get you one. We'll okay. get you set I'm up. I'm very serious about that, Mitch. Yeah, I we'll have you come down to the shop. Do you guys do live feeds from out in the public? We're talking about doing Facebook live feeds. Maybe we'll have a, a deal in my shop over, over on the oh, west man. side. Okay, well that's something we can look forward to. Um, but tell us a little bit more real quick about your YouTube videos. So people, I, I watched a few of them. Um, Tell, so tell YouTube is, is the place to be. I, I started, I jumped into YouTube back in 2009 when I, when I started thinking about doing this, I, I started watching some YouTube videos and very quickly I realized that by, to, in order to get out, get your, you know, the word out, it, it, YouTube was the place to be. And so we've been nonstop uh, since 2010, we haven't missed a single week. We've done we're coming up on 600 YouTube videos. Holy smokes. Uh, How many followers do you have? So we're at 35,000 and growing. It just continues to grow. And we continue to do the videos every week. Um, Man, you're not just, okay, see, I was starting to call you a craftsman, a builder, and you're like a maker of a movement. Well, it's a whole, you know, the, the internet, it, it, the way I see it is if you're an artist in modern times, it's our responsibility to use the internet and be better artists than anybody before us because we have a tool there that nobody else before us had. And inspire others to do Absolutely. The same, to it's all about showing other people and teaching people and sharing what you're doing and building an audience. And, and then what we've been able to do is achieve to find folks through the internet. We're learning more every day. We just continue to do it and we're having a whole bunch of fun. Where can people find you on YouTube? What's your handle? The easiest thing to do is just Google my name, Mitchell Dillman. And you'll see all sorts of stuff. My YouTube channel will come up probably real quick, right there, first or second. Um, but but you'll be able to find all sorts of stuff. We've been putting stuff on the internet just day after day now for five years. So, so I want to know, Mitch, what has been one of the projects you've been most passionate about? Most, let's say, emotionally invested in? Uh, it's it's building this business. This is something that we're building from the ground up and I've dedicated seven days a week now for five years into this and it's a combination of things. It really is, you mentioned it a minute ago, about a movement. There is a movement I feel like uh, across the board of people using the internet to learn new things 
and whenever and you have the ability to go out and do anything you want yeah I, I mean I really see you as a social entrepreneur you're not just uh, cleaning up our city and our town and helping people who lost their homes but you're also reaching people all over the globe to inspire them to, to use their own hands and connect with the earth and build things it's so gratifying and I love that that I'm able to shed such a good light here on Colorado Springs because we are reaching people all around the globe and we've got such a cool town right here and I, I, I saw early on that because I'm out in the community doing stuff with different businesses, so we've started doing videos around town on top of everything else. So it's it's really, it is it is a, di a, a digital entrepreneurship and, and it started with the woodworking and the welding um, and we're just gonna keep growing it. We're, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you. You are such a gem to our city, I feel like. You're doing so much great work here. Um, and just one more time, you have multiple websites, so where can people learn more about you and your businesses? Come find me at coloradospringsawmill.com or even mitchelldillman.com, either one. Those are both good places to start. Just Google my name on, on, on Google. All right, well, local craftsman, artist, social entrepreneur, YouTube star, uh, Mitchell Dillman. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me. It was great fun. All right. Let's get back to more great country variety right now. It's 107.3 and 1530 Mountain Country.